Hi everybody, my name is Paul Presentes, good afternoon. Um, I will present uh, APT PBO. Um, uh, I am from uh, Caixa Magica, a Portuguese Linux distribution. I'm colleague of Andre and other people that today presented about um, some of the projects which we are involved. And APT PBO um, is a proof of concept in, in, as a meta installer and to install packages in a Linux distribution. And it was developed in scope of uh, my PhD and the Mancusi project. Um, I will start by introducing the problem, the package installation problem. It's very briefly because we have talked about during the afternoon. And I will then present APT BBO and some experimental results. Regarding the, the problem, there is this wonderful XKCD cartoon about a timetable from uh, different courses where there is this kind of course in computer science, which is uh, inter the description of the course is intermediate compiler design with a focus on dependency resolution. And if you look carefully, the prerequisite requirements are the same um, the course itself. So it depends on itself. So somehow expressing the nightmare that could be dependency resolution. Um, and of course, installing software packages is a critical process in uh, operating systems and in Linux and in Linux distributions. Um, in Caixa Magica as a distribution, and I believe that it's common to other Linux distributions, we have a lot of reports of packages that are broken, and the dependencies are broken, the dependency said that states that it depends from another package uh, that is not present, or it is present, but the installer cannot solve the dependency, cannot find the package that is necessary. And the, the, the solution that we worked out since 2007, uh, it was presented first year in, at FOSDEM in 2007, was using SAT, or better, to use, instead of SAT, is to use uh, pseudo Boolean optimization to choose if first to find the solution and then to choose from different solutions. That was more or less in the line uh, of some questions of uh, about uh, Libzip. And today, fortunately, there are a lot of projects and a lot of installers that already incorporates or SAT or other solver capabilities. Uh, Edus was a European project which, which more or less started the development on this area. Mincuzi, that was already talked here today. Opium, a paper in, uh, presented in ISCSC or ACE, ACE it was an ACE conference. Uh, SUS LibZip, Eclipse, P2, and so on. Um, this graph somehow represents a, a very simple problem of dependencies and conflicts. But somehow it's very useful to understand what, you, what is really the problem. Um, so imagine that you, you want to install car, and imagine that your favorite Met installer will try to install the more updated versions of each package. So if you look carefully, if we try to install Tire 2 and Glass 2 um, in the same uh, set of packages, uh, you have a conflict. So you have to backtrack and install not a so updated version of one of them. For instance, installing tire version 1. So the name of the package is represented um, in, the, in the box and then we have the, the versions in this graph. And this is what the meta installers should be able to solve. And it was presented before also that this kind of problem is a NP-complete problem. So what does APT PBO introduces that is new um, to this problem? First about the, the pipeline, the architecture. So um, APT PBO, it's a Perl um, wrapper um, that works above APT GET. Uh, it's not the regular APT GET, it is uh, a, a change in APT GET that has a special function that is PBO installed. The special function, the spe uh, special option, would encode the problem as a pseudo Boolean optimization problem. And then the output of this first step is a, a package installation encoded problem. 
the package installation encoded problem encoded in PBO would be fitted to the PBO solver. Could be it's in a standard format, it's OPB, so it can be fitted to or Minisat uh, Mini, Mini Plus or WBO or any other PBO solver. So what is the focus of a TPBO? It's not the solver itself, but the way we encode the problem and the kind of solution and interaction with the user for each solution that we find. After the solver returns um, a solution, uh, we then process that solution. Uh, if, it, if it is needed, we have more iterations, three, four, five iterations, or if we find it is a, a final solution, we will again, pass to apt-get in order to proceed with installation of the packages. It's apt-get that could be RPM, since we don't use apt-get in the end to solve the dependencies. We just use it to install packages or to retrieve it from a, a, a server. So this is basically the architecture of PB, apt-pbo. Um, as I said, it's pluggable. We can use one solver or another solver as it supports OPB format to be any, use anyone. It's the, the third block is for parsing and processing. Uh, the fourth block is to install the packages. This is APT, APT PBO algorithm. Um, we have a, a cycle from the repeat line one until the line 10. And in the first step of the, uh, of the cycle, we call the PBO install uh, option in apt-get, the one that I've said to you that it would encode the problem in PBO. And we pass several things to, to that function. First, we, pa we, we pass the package that we want to install. They are represented as P1. Then we pass the, the conflicts that the package uh, involves. Then we pass the policy. What do we plan to do with the final uh, solution? If we plan to have packages very updated, if we plan not to remove any kind of package, um, then we pass um, R and PI. R is the universe of packages that is available, the different repositories. And PI are the packages that are already installed on the system. The return of the PBO install is, as I said, a PBO encoded problem, a file with the PBO encoded, and it basically has two things. First, the constraints, and uh, second, the cost function. The function that says what kind of solution are we expecting. This function is, um, it depends of course in the policy, if we want more updated packages or we want not to remove some package. Then with the encoded problem, we pass it to the, the solver, the PBO solver, and we reach a solution. Now this is the, the, the different part, that is, we, for each package in the solution, we, s we check which package will be removed from the system. And then we will check the reverse dependencies for the packages that are proposed to be removed. Just in order, of course, not to have some package in the system that would depend on the one that will be removed. And we do it the same for packages that will be installed. For instance, if uh, PG will be installed, then we check if there is any reverse conflicts on that package. Imagine that there, is, there will be removed some package but without any reverse dependencies on the system and that will be installed two or three packages that, that does not have any reverse conflict on the system. Then it will be done in only one iteration. In average, we have three to four iterations on this. Um, finally, we, uh, we reach the set of packages that we propose to install or remove and we proceed with the installation. Um, <coughs> what, the, the big difference between this approach or LibZip or other solvers in Mancusi um, competition, it, we have a lot of things in common like using uh, solvers and so on, but in this case we are not using a lexicographical order to define which solution will we propose to the user. We are using a multi-criteria decision-making problem. It's a multi-criteria multi decision-making problem. And we integrate different objective functions. And 
encoding it as a multi-objective problem and transforming transforming into a single objective problem using weighted sum scalarization. So try to to explain a little bit further these. Imagine that we we have three cost functions represented here as F1, F2, F3. In the first cost function, F1, we say that um, we, we don't want to, re it expresses um, the, the will not to remove any package. In F2, we explain or we express um, the, the, the updated value of the packages. In F3, for instance, we could say that is the size of the packages. And then as a user, we provide a weight, 8R, 8P, 8V. And that weight, it's of course depending on how we are using this Linux distribution. As a critical server, as our bleeding edge desktop. And depending on that three weights, of course the solution will be different. Some experimental results. Well, this was a... Um, um, specific uh, installation set that was um, tried out. It's, for instance, installing Kappa Splash on a system with uh, different versions of packages from uh, different uh, versions of uh, the distribution. Uh, while apt gets failed in 123 cases to backtrack to find a version of the packages that would allow to proceed with installation, APTB PBO was able to, to find it all the possible solutions as APT, Aptitude and Smart and LibZ probably. And what comes next? It, this is some, time, some benchmarks. Uh, APT BBO is um, in this case, uh, slower than any other, any of the others. Um, what is mo more interesting is, I believe, not re not reaching the solution because today we are uh, going toward that the solvers are uh, or the mapping installers are able to reach the solution. Is which solution will we propose to the user? I think that the question <coughs> will start to go into that point. This is more or less characterized. This table characterizes the installed packages, updated package, removed packages, and non-created packages. When in that base system, we try to install 1,000 package, 1,000 packages from the Debian popular contest. And for instance, aptget proposes to install 7,076 packages, updated. 17, remove 12, and not downgrade anyone. And then Aptitude proposes a, diff a different scenario of installed packages updated and removed, and Smart pr proposes a different scenario. We have not one, but three lines for, a, for, for PBO, depending on the weights that we provide for each scenario. So in the freshness, uh, I had given more weight to having updated packages. In the PBO removal profile, I give more weight not to remove packages. And in the number, the total number of packages, I try not give weight, not uh, give weight to the, the reduce the number, the total installed number of packages on the system. So depending on that, for instance, in freshness, as expected, we have a lot of packages that are, that are updated, uh, while there are only a few that are removed. And this graph expresses the same numbers, but just to see that with colors, that in the different PBO profiles, we have uh, a lot of different results from the number of updated packages, removed packages, installed packages, or downgrade. And now I will go to a specific example. For instance, in this same experiment, um, for package ATSPI, that was one of the 1,000 packages that was tried out, um, we tried two different profiles in this case. Um, a more aggressive uh, profile in trying to have freshness and a more conservative profile. In the more conservative profile, not to remove packages, we, we, we tuned up the weights in order not to remove packages would be more conservative. While in the aggressive, we want to have updated packages. Um, 
And then the number of installed packages was a lot more in the conservative. The number of the updates were the same. And the number of removed packages were, of course, lower in the conservative scenario. And the downgraded packages were um, higher in the conservative scenario. Why well, I think this example is, is interesting, because imagine that we use a lexicograph lexicographical order for saying that, first, we don't want to remove any package. So we are in this second scenario, conservative. And the trade-off of not removing packages is that we have to install a lot of packages and try to, to see why. So this case was because in the, in the, in the most, most more recent version, file ro roller was in conflict with lib Nautilus extension one. So lib Nautilus extension one would break file roller uh, below some, some certain version. So while in one scenario, APTPBL was able to say to the user, okay, if you, if you don't, uh, if you don't, uh, if you are able to remove file roller, I can choose a solution of packages like in the second column, aggressive. If you don't intend to remove file roller, I, I just have to, to install that set of packages. Um, and why? Because it has to, to, to maintain file roller, but then it has to install a lot of packages that the, the newer uh, version of file roller would, would install. Um, to summarize, I'm, I'm not saying that there is one scenario that is better than the other. What I'm saying it is that between different uh, Linux users, uh, some might prefer some updated and others might prefer not removing a package because it would break something in the system. Um, what I believe it is in the future, uh, maybe the progress on meta installers would go further than just finding a version, would go more toward try to give the user the possibility to customize and to tune what kind of scenarios does it want in the, in the, in the final solution. Um, this is the, the more aggressive scenario. So to finalize with some conclusions. So the mindset is not to compete against LibZip or other uh, solvers. We are not so focused. Uh, I am myself a developer, and Ray also developed a lot for APTBBO. We are not so focused and put it as the as the uh, production ready tool, but more uh, proof of concept and more a way for trying to see what kind of solutions the users might like. Um, but anyway, it is available as the code is GPL and yet can be tested because there are packages available for Debian, Mandriven, Cache Magic. Um, I believe that the PBL encoding uh, would prove to be suitable for the problem and provides extra flexibility compared, for instance, with sub tools that just reach uh, a solution but are not so able to, to wait what is the what are the user preferences. Um, using multi-criteria approaches might be also desirable uh, and can achieve uh, an option. Um, performance is still uh, an issue. We had the MISH competition that was talked about. We have been present in the last editions of the MISH competition and we find that besides some syntax problems that we were not supporting but we are almost ready there, there are also a performance issue. Uh, there is of course the a cost of trying to having the cost function with multiple uh, weighted functions. Uh, so I think the next steps will be also toward having a more performance uh, cost function, a more performant encoding. Um, as I said, uh, we are trying to, to, to improve the performance. We are working with the PBO solvers, with Vashman King from Inesh, that, is, that develops a PBO solver. But more than that, we are trying to see how we encode the problem using multi-criteria, but without losing performance. And there were a lot of things that were in each competition that we did not support, like multiple requests, like constraints, uh, the version version of the package constraint and so on that we are trying to develop just to also to to, to be able to compare a guy against other other meta installers 
uh, we recognize that the the large uh, the most of the participants on MISH competition uh, are more focused on having good solvers because they are from research teams in solvers that develop solvers and um, such as CPLEX or uh, Minisat or whatever, and we are more focused in encoding the problem and try to understand what the Linux user expects from a map installer in terms of the solution. So our focus is not so much the performance and the solver itself, but more the kind of solution and that, if that solution is really useful for the user or not. We have also uh, started uh, with Sophia Flores, an interactive mode we, where we can have the dependency tree, we can say that a, a package must be installed, or you can say that a package must, must not be removed. So some interactive mode with the user, which is very interesting, because the user then can say, okay, I, I want a second run of the APT BBL, but just blocking this package. I don't want to remove this package, which for us is very easy. This interactive mode is already developed, but we are trying to, to get it better. <coughs> I, I was um, very fast on the algorithm and about the, the basics uh, of the APT PBO, but I suggest you to, or if you want, just drop me an email and I will send to you. I suggest you to, to, to read our paper that was published in um, ACE, Automated Software Engineer Conference and get somehow detail a little bit further the algorithm and the weight of the, the cost functions. Um, we have also, I'm not, I'm not sure if it is updated, but we updated at, at least recently, but we have also this site, aptpbo.kashamashka.pt, where we have there the sources and so on, and links for papers and so on. And I would like to thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you get back to the to the algorithm, please? Which one? Uh, the first one you showed with the uh, iterative loop. Um, uh, yes, this one. one. This one. Um, okay. So I did not understand uh, why you need these iterative loops in order to. Uh, launch again the solver when you remove or when you install packages because I was expecting that you are um, encoding the complete dependency graph with dependencies and conflicts into the problem, the logical problem that you send it over to the PBO solver and I understand this is happening with this uh, SIP for instance when you translate to to SAT and here it seems that you're not doing that because you will have to iterate when your solver proposes to install something new or remove some, something new can you explain why, why this is necessary? That's right. And um, we are not encoding all the dependencies and conflict stream. So we are only encoding um, the cone that is direct below the package that we want to install and the installed packages. I see. Why is, why is that? Um, in some, first, we expect that in large repositories, um, and for instance, if we have um, a small set of install, small set comparable with the total repository, small set of installed packages, and the packages we want to install. Um, the cost of encoding the entire tree could be uh, could be worse. So we, the average of runs in the different uh, scenarios that we tried is three or four, and not much. So that's the trade-off that we have chosen. Have you measured uh, how much you lose when you encode the complete dependency graph into a PPO? How much in, the, in the beginning, yes, mm -hmm. and, but it depends a lot, of course, in the, in the scenario where you are testing. For instance, if you are testing in a small repository, um, of course, encoding everything is not so heavy uh, as have multiple iterations. But what we found is that the number of iterations does not grow fast. So it's always steady because you start to include the packages. <coughs> pardon me. That uh, have reverse dependencies with the, the, the tree. Um, so summarizing, um, we have done some measures, 
and we, we, we wish that this approach for our case would be better, but I admitted that it depends on some conditions, as the ratio between our cone, dependency cone, and the size of the repository. So it's not a silver bullet that I believe would, uh, would fit on all problems. And it could be interesting to try to have some experiments on precisely on that, on different repositories, problems, try to see if this approach against encoding uh, all the repository as constraints. <coughs> um, I would like would to question on that. Uh, is this algorithm guaranteed to, to terminate? Yes, because, Why? okay, I will answer that one, but let me just say one thing before, and that is, I want to emphasize that the approach of encoding all the repository is not only on the constraints. We have to put it also in the cost function. Because in the cost function, we have the packages uh, that are already installed, not installed, the, the difference between the versions. So if it would be only the constraints, I guess would not be so, or even nothing heavy. But having also in the cost function, the number of the variables in PBO uh, grows very fast. The question you were saying, um, in the worst case, um, we have imagined that the number of packages in the repository are x. In the worst case, you have x minus p, the, the, the number of, uh, or the packages that you want to install iterations, because you don't have, you just add the new packages to the problem, okay. but then you start solving it, so that would be the worst case. But in practice, we have a very steady, with a low standard deviation, number of iterations. <coughs> okay. Is there any other question? Okay, thank you.